Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming all the way down from Manchester all right. <laughs> just to be on the green couch. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> and we are going to talk about something that most people don't find extremely exciting, mm -hmm. you know, but it's definitely something that people need to focus on and talk about and understand. But that's why we have you on the show, because okay. we're going to talk about making tax digital. Yes. Right. So you're a sage business expert. We are, yes. So no better person yeah, to have exactly. on, on the show. Indeed. So for those who don't fully know, mm -hmm. right, explain what the whole making tax digital is because it's all coming up now on the 1st of is, April. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so making tax digital is a big project that HMRC are working on. Okay. Um, the highlight at the moment is making tax digital for VAT and that's what starts on the 1st of April. Um, but, but there are mm -hmm. other things rolling out over the next few years, um, making yeah. tax for income tax and things like that. So it's, it really is a, a big project that they're trying to work out. Okay. Um, the easiest way to think about it, um, I was on a webinar recently and one of my tax lecturers, brilliant lady, gave it quite easily. Um, think of it at the moment, we, you have your office, you yeah. have all your information, your tax information, you sort of kind of throw it into a van, the van drives to HMRC and it kind of shifts it over the garden fence and it sits on its doorstep. Mm. And then at some point HMRC kind of open the door, pick it all in and they deal with it. Yeah. That's how it works at the moment. Okay. Um, what's going to happen is it's going to go from your office, it's going to have a shuttle bus and it literally goes all the way to your front door, you shove it in, and it drives all the way through the gate, through the front door, and straight to HMRC's computers. So it's a lot more seamless, and okay. it works backwards, it goes back and forth. So the idea is that it reduces inaccuracies, there's no manual intervention anywhere. Okay. Um, it is this because you're doing it all yourself online? Yeah, so basically okay. once you put in the inputs at the beginning, yeah. it's just going to go straight through to HMRC via a direct link. Okay, so for, for, for practical terms, people are running a business, and they have to do this themselves, right? And, and yeah. usually do it on paper and do it the manual way. What are the, the benefits? Because a lot of people are probably going, oh, this is a change. They do it differently. They don't have to learn something new. Pract practically wise, what do they have to do differently this time? Okay, um, so if you're using sort of manual paper, like your, your, your old quill and paper type mm -hmm. thing, um, then you really do have to change things because electronically you're not able to send anything to HMRC. Yeah. Um, from a, from a HMRC perspective, they are not getting accurate data. There's too much manual intervention. It could be wrong. You could type a nine as a six, a six as a nine. You could mm. do a thousand instead of a hundred. Yeah. Things can be wrong. You could be declaring the wrong sales, the wrong information. Eventually, you could be paying the wrong tax. And is that from their end inputting it wrong? Because if they're getting it from paper and you're sending it out to them, right? It's they it's might upload it wrong. They might upload it wrong yeah. and you might do it as well. So okay. there's inaccuracies all over the place. Um, and also timeliness of information. If you're writing up stuff, you might be doing it sort of six, nine months after. Yeah. I mean, you know, even like a, a tax return, for example. Trying to remember. Trying to remember yeah. what happened 18 months ago is quite difficult of for course. businesses. So, so the idea of doing it electronically yeah. um, means that the, the data is live a lot of the time and it's more accurate because there's no manual intervention. Yeah. So you're saying there's no manual intervention and how does it actually happen? How does the, the information get input if I'm not just there ty typing it in? Okay, so the idea would be to use uh, some sort of cloud accounting software. Yeah. Um, and at that point, you are raising your invoices through the software. So mm. obviously, you're not going to send dud sales invoices to a client. Um, you know, you're taking photographs of your receipts and through data capture, it's correct information because it's there mm. and it's being directly converted into a purchase invoice or yeah. a receipt. And now all that data is being stored electronically within the software. That's the ideal. Um, from there, you're, is taking out what is VAT and what is income, what is expenditure, okay. and then that data is being collated and pushed through the system, and then that gets what's sent. That's what gets sent to uh, HMRC. So people that are using accountancy software, right? Because we're using accounts software at the moment. What is changing on the first of April? Because if we're already manually are putting it in yep. ourselves and it's automatic digitally going across, what is changing then from the first? Do I do we need to change anything? using an accountancy software? No, if you're using accounting software that is already MTD um, com compatible, yeah. then you don't really have to do anything. There might be a few code changes you need to put in, yeah. um, but generally you're good to go. Okay. You are perfectly fine. Um, if you're not VAT registered, it doesn't affect you. Right. Um, if you are voluntarily VAT registered, which means that your turnover is less than £85,000, this does not apply to you. Okay. Um, it's only if you are compulsory VAT registered i.e. with a turnover of £85,000, um, that you have to consider making tax digital for that. Okay. So, so probably the big question is, if someone's watching, what are the implications if you do not migrate over to Sage One or an accountancy so software platform? What are the implications if you don't do that? Um, you can't file your VAT returns, basically. Okay. So the date is the 1st of April, that sort of go live date. Mm. However, it only affects people whose VAT 
period starts after the 1st of April. So we had a client last week say, oh my God, I've got my VAT return, I've got to file it at the end of March, what do I have to do? And we're like, no, old, old style works. It's only one, anyone whose VAT return starts after the 1st. Okay. So if you're a February quarter end, for example, it won't affect you until about September time. That's right. when you do your first submission. Um, so you take your first VAT return that starts after the 1st of April, so take it that date. So April, May, June, you file until the 7th of August. So in that period, you've got to make sure that yeah. you're, you're up and running. So you've got a few months. Um, HMRC is sending letters out to everybody who is uh, affected by this. So you need to look out for that letter. I know, I know you said anyone that isn't ready for the 1st of April can't file their, their VAT returns, right? Just want to explain to the audience here exactly what that means if you don't file your VAT returns. Okay, so HMRC have been quite good because they're doing it parallel run yeah. at the moment. And for the first year, then trying not to find people for late filing, mm. you'll still get um, penalised for not paying your VAT. Yeah. So say, for example, at the moment you use Excel or whatever, and you've calculated your VAT return, yeah. you probably get your nine boxes, you go onto HMRC, you type in your nine numbers, and out it goes. Yeah. That's what happens at the moment for the majority of people. Mm. Um, from the first VAT return that you do after the 1st of April, you can't do that manual typing on to, onto HMRC anymore. Yeah. It just won't let you. Okay. So that's why you need some sort of software. Um, there are bridging products out there. Um, so bridging software is where someone is not already on cloud accounting or not MTD compatible accounting products yeah. um, like Excel and you put all the information in, it has like an API, it has a link into okay. this bridging software, it comes into that and then that talks to HMRC. Okay. That is a compromise in my eyes, it's something that will work for the next year or so, HMRC have, have got a soft landing on this. Mm. I think long term you do need to start thinking about your actual accountancy product and how you're going to use that and start yeah. using it in your business. Because I suppose if what's the point using Excel and using the bridging software when it's going to come a year yeah. down the line. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be probably a hard stop because there has to be there a hard stop There will be, yeah. They stage. can't let it drag on forever. Yeah, of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. Sid, thank you so much for coming in. That's there was so many question marks over making tax digital and you cleared a lot of them up. Thank you so much. No Thanks, Sid. Thanks thank so you. much. Cheers.